Although we've seen rapid growth in recent decades, the way people consume and the emerging markets we invest in remains overwhelmingly informal. Income levels in Africa, Asia and LATAM are rising rapidly across large segments of the population. And as people's disposable incomes rise, we are seeing major changes in the way they eat, drink and shop. We expect these changes to only run deeper and open up more of the formal market. RSA Partners invests in market-leading consumer companies, which we believe will continue to be the vanguard of formalization over the coming decades. Traditionally, if you look at the way a typical consumer in India purchases products, it could be his groceries, soaps, shampoos, or even basic food products. These are typically consumed in the local street vendor down the road, or something like a, a mom and pop shop, uh, which is uh, close by, that in India what we refer to as a Kirana store. Every day, we have 100 customers, and their surname is mostly because कितने सालों से वो सामान खरीदते आ रहे हैं यहां पे आज नहीं कम से कम 20 साल से रिलेशन मेंटेन है तो उनके घर में जैसे कोई चेंज भी हुआ जैसे पहले मम्मी पापा खरीदते थे अभी नई शादी हुई लड़का लड़की भी आता है उनको भी हम लोग धीरे वाय वाय उनके थ्रू हम लोग पहचान लेते अपने को याद रहेगा अपने मेमोरी में फिट रहता है और थोड़ा बहुत उनको कौन सी चीज कैसी लगती है वो अपने को याद रखनी पड़ती है कि मतलब ये कस्टमर को ये प्रोडक्ट लगता है तो उससे अपने को इजीली रहता है वो अपना कस्टमर मेंटेन रहता है टूटता नहीं है मतलब अपना खुद का बना हुआ रहता है अभी हर महीने आएगा अलग-अलग चीज दे देंगे उसको महीने का शॉपिंग रहेगा तो हम लोग मॉल जाते हैं लेकिन डेली करेगा तो किराना मॉल में जाते ट्रेडिशनली क्लोज टू 100% ऑफ द स्टोर्स और रिटेल आउटलेट्स वर लोकली रन बाय द मॉम एंड पॉप स्टोर्स व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड द किराना स्टोर्स बट नाउ इन द लास्ट 5 टू 10 इयर्स वी हैव सीन a ramp up of modern retail uh, in the form of supermarkets, in the form of hypermarkets, and now recently convenience stores. वो develop करते हैं ना अपनी चीज को जैसे 30 वाला rice खाते हैं तो 40 वाले पे 40 से 50 जैसे-जैसे होते हैं उनकी purchasing strong होती है जैसे ये भी दाल तीन type का है तो जिसको middle class है धीरे-धीरे बच्चे अच्छे काम पे लग जाते हैं तो आदमी इससे ही खाने लगता है ऐसा नहीं कि नहीं तो हमको मालूम चलता है कि ये customer मतलब इनके घर में है ना है पैसे का और यदि ये खाते-खाते इस पे आ गया तो अपने को मालूम है कि इनके घर में कुछ न कुछ प्रॉब्लम है ऐसा है 5 6 7 8 9 खतरा सो इन इंडिया वी आर सीइंग अ शिफ्ट ऑफ परचेसिंग पैटर्न्स अवे फ्रॉम अनऑर्गेनाइज्ड रिटेल टू मॉडर्न रिटेल एंड देयर इज अ फ्यू रीजंस फॉर दैट द राइज ऑफ द मिडिल क्लास कंज्यूमर दिस विल रिजल्ट इन द लेवल ऑफ डिस्पोजेबल इनकम ओनली इंक्रीजिंग एज पीपल माइग्रेट फ्रॉम लो इनकम कैटेगरीज टू अपर इनकम the aspirational desires will increase. And as they increase, they become more brand loyal and they prefer owning branded products as opposed to loose products. There's a few reasons why Kirana stores are becoming uneconomical to be viable in the future. One reason is this modernization of cities or urbanization. Because of the retail landscape developing and infrastructure becoming better in India, we're finding rental costs increasing. So paying rent for these Kirana stores owners is becoming more expensive. There is a succession issue in India among the Kirana store owners. Children of Kirana stores, especially the sons of them who are traditionally expected to run the Kirana store after the father retires, are becoming more aspirational and have preferences to work in corporate offices and more professional salary jobs. One of the companies that we invest in is called Future Retail. Future Retail owns a hypermarket chain of stores called Big Bazaar. Now, Big Bazaar is a, a hypermarket retail format which has over 200 stores across India in over 100 cities. And they provide a wide range of products to consumers in the food and beverages sector, groceries, apparel, and home care. So, Big Bazaar started its first store in Kolkata. That's in an extreme east of the country. Um, I think the idea was to really think about three basic needs of uh, the Indian shoppers. Uh, we colloquially call it roti, kapda and makan, which is food, shelter and uh, apparel and garments. So I think the whole idea right from the outset was that there is a need for customers. That we, we I think, um, very early on Big Bazaar recognized that India is going to be younger, it's going to be consuming much larger on these three segments. As the average Indian consumer migrates from unorganized retail to the organized retail side of uh, purchasing, we're seeing the consumer prefers to buy more premium products. Daily kapre ka to kirana mal mein milte hai. Mix shakkar, do dal, bil, chawal, gheu ka aata, gheu, 
जो हम लोग लेते हैं डेली का वो यहाँ मिलता है लेकिन सम जो भी कोई बच्चे लोग को अलग खाना हो आज का जूस निकले अलग अलग बिस्किट निकले चॉकलेट निकले तो हम लोग वो मॉल में ठीक गिरते हैं डिस्काउंट भी मिलता है और खाने में भी बच्चे लोग को जमता है इसके लिए लेकिन इधर के यहाँ माल ही मिल सकते हैं जो रोज कल डेली में यूज़ करती हो In a large country like ours, I think uh, Nielsen still claims that modern retail has managed to touch just about 10% of uh, urban India. So urban India is not more than 35 to 40% of the country, and only 10% of that what modern retail uh, reaches. Big Bazaar occupies a 25% uh, share in that in the food space, and a close to 40% space in the non-food space in that uh, in the organised segment. So. When you go back and put the numbers together, I think we are really talking about not more than three to four percent of India touched by modern retail. In Africa, consumption as a whole is at an even lower stage of development. East African breweries, Diageo's Kenyan Lisp subsidiary, and a holding of the Africa Fund since 2006 is playing a key role in the formalisation of the alcoholic beverage sector. We probably have slightly less than half of the uh, of the market share in the region. We are big in in Kenya, where we have uh, a market share of about over 90 percent in beer, and uh, slightly uh, over 50 percent in spirits. Uh, in Uganda, we have slightly lower market share, which would be around about above 30 percent uh, in beer. Uh, in Tanzania, we are smaller there, about 20 percent market share, and we also have a presence in uh, Burundi, Rwanda, and South Sudan, where we export our products from the Kenya factory. One of the challenges that we have is that the informal market, the illicit market in Kenya, is about 50% of the total alcohol market. So one of the things we've been trying to do is to try and see how we can be able to tap to tap into that market. The biggest growth opportunity for us is to be able to target that that consumer and be able to provide them with safe and quality alcohol. Na ni lianza kuuza i pombe mwaka wa mwaka wa 1995 na nimekaa kwa hii kuuza changaa mwaka 19. Kwa ma, mwezi mmoja naweza uza hata kama jirkan 10 ama jirkan 7. Naweza jirkan 7 kwa mwezi naweza pata kama shilingi 1030 kama 30000. Watu wengi wanakunywa changaa sababu mapata yao ni kidogo. Wakati wanaenda kukunywa bia, bia ukienda kukunywa bei rahisi inaanza na shilingi 150 na uwezi kunywa chupa moja ulewe. Na hii changa yetu tunaanza kupima kuanzia 20. Sasa ukiwa na 20 unaweza pata kidogo, ukiwa na 50 unaweza pata kidogo. Sasa wale watu wa, wengi wenye wanaishi kibira wanapenda changa sababu bei yao bei ya changa iko chini kushinda ya, ya bia. But illicit alcohol consumption in Kenya has resulted in hundreds of deaths. Due to incredibly low levels of disposable income, there is a fine line between formal and informal consumption. Kenyan consumers aspire to drink branded products for a range of reasons including status, taste, safety considerations, but price remains the fundamental purchase driver. Given that Kenyans drink only 10 liters of beer per capita annually and 50% of the market is still informal, the growth opportunity for EABL in both beer and spirits is enormous. If somebody gets maybe a good job, maybe a good salary, You can change from uh, taking changa, and then you can see him or her starting drinking the beers, maybe Tasca, maybe Prisina, something like that. These substantial opportunities in the alcoholic beverage sector are just as prominent across the eat, drink, wash, wear shop space. The goal on the continent at the moment is to make these aspirational products more affordable by penetrating lower price points. Smaller package sizes create stepping stones for consumers to move from informal to formal consumption, and as disposable incomes rise, they can move up the ladder to more premium priced products. Our job at RSA Partners is to identify which businesses are taking the steps required to maintain this competitive advantage over the long term.